Welcome to the show, hello. My guest today is a Corwegian, at least that's what she calls herself. Jess Eriksson is a Norwegian Korean who was born and raised in the US and who's now lived here in Berlin for the last few years. She's one of the thousands of young up and coming people who've moved to this city in the last few years. She came to work here for a startup company, but the geekettes became her passion. Well, they sound like a, a sassy girl group to me, but I know they're not. And rather than explain what they are, I'll let their co-founder and CEO do just that. Welcome to the show, Jess. Thank um, you. Thank I you I hope very you much. didn't mind me saying <laughs> they sound like a... I mean, they, yeah, they sound like a sort of... Um, modern-day Andrew sisters to me, the Geekettes, but they're not. Yeah. It's a very serious organisation. We're serious, but we know how to have fun as well. Um, you know, Geekettes, in essence, is an organisation that supports aspiring and existing women in technology. And my co-founder, Denise Philip, and I are really aiming to close the gender gap in this industry. And, you just uh, mentioned her, so I should, yeah, should bring her up. So there's two of you, actually. There's two of us, and Denise Philip is actually a born and raised Berliner. She's probably watching right now. And wow. yes, we met at a coding workshop here in Berlin. She fell in love with the idea and soon enough we decided to build this out and we offer workshops, a mentorship program, um, lots of events to support women. Um, and wh why did you start it? I mean, you came to Berlin, did, mm -hmm. you, start, get, did you get the feeling it was a terribly macho society here? Oh, absolutely. But it, really? <laughs> but it's across the board. It's not just um, home to Berlin and Germany. I think the entire tech industry has been dominated by men, and I think there needs to be a paradigm shift. I think there needs to be women and people of different diverse backgrounds being involved in the process and the creation of technology. Um, so that's why I do what I do. In essence, it's bringing women to the table, women who have great and new ideas, um, and really becoming a role models for the next generation of girls. Mm. You know, to see it is to believe it and to become it. So that's what we try to do. It's quite a surprise because I'm thinking of the tech industry as a modern, mm -hmm. new industry, very egalitarian, you know. Mm -hmm. But you're saying that women are discriminated against in it? Or just there's not enough of them in it? Or, or... Yeah, I think there's been issues with discrimination. Um, however, I think that would change, obviously, if there were more women in the industry today. Uh, there'd be less instances of this. And I think the important thing is not to focus on what's been wrong in the past. It's focusing on how we can make a better future and, and become more inclusive and invite women into this industry. I certainly don't want to work in the tech industry if it's always going to look the same, sound the same, run by the same people. And that's why I'm pushing this in Berlin and, and globally now, because I think there is tremendous opportunity for women to build a career and to become the next Marsha Zuckerberg or Stacey Jobs. I think we need this. And um, the industry is going to benefit tremendously if they have more diversity. I mean, what do you think can women bring to the industry that men can't? Well, I think female perspective in the design process, in the development, in the understanding of how to market a technology product to a female population. I think there's actually a lack of innovation in female sub-industries. We might see more products and digital solutions for women. Because um, you have to ask yourself, if there's a young 20-year-old man who just got out of college, starting his own startup company, how will he really know what a woman in her 50s needs? What kind of digital solution does she need in her everyday life? And that's something I think women will be able to step up to the plate and provide. Mm. Um, but we need more innovators. We need uh, women investors who can invest in these products. And I'm excited to see what could happen with Geekettes over the next few years. What's, well, uh, what's been the reaction of the men to Geekettes? It's mixed. Um, <laughs> They yeah. worried about you. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take over. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think... I, I, I would say overall the men have been very supportive. Um, I've had a few critics along the way, I'm not going to lie, um, challenging why I'm doing this, um, arguing that I'm pushing for a monoculture of all women, and that's exactly what I'm not doing. I'm trying to give a platform for women to stand up, embrace each other, embrace the solidarity behind this movement in tech, and and push each other up to the top, because I think women tend to hold themselves back. And if you have a platform like Geek Gets, 
they, they tend to break out of their shell and, and start talking about what they're doing in public. Um, and it might frighten people at first, and this change is happening pretty rapidly, but I can tell you that the response has been overwhelmingly positive. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see what happens in our new cities. We've just launched globally. Yeah, launch. I know, we're, we're, we're talking about that in yeah. a bit, but let's see you and fellow geek cats in action right now. Here's a film about you from when you first started getting going uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. Yeah, okay. It's a man's world in the tech industry, but these women are looking to balance the scales in the German capital. Spearheaded by PR agent Jessica Eriksson, they're called the Berlin Geek Heads. A group of what started with a dinner table of eight has grown to a community of more than 200 members since February. In such a short time span, all these women kind of just sort of came together and it's great that this platform and, and this blog and the meetups have kind of facilitated the whole process of connecting entrepreneurs and, and women in the tech scene. Caitlin Winner is one of three founders of popular social networking service, Amen. Like many other women, she was faced with an industry drought of female role models. There just aren't a whole lot of um, places to learn when you're in a position of um, starting a company or, or even joining a company that in a, in a, um, as a technologist or as a programmer and you're a woman. There's just not a lot of people to, to look up to and say, oh, I want to be that person. Or like when I grew up, I want to be like that person. And I think guys have an easier time at kind of modeling their behavior after someone who's already kind of excelled in that profession. And that's where the Berlin Geek Heads come into it, building an empowering network of women from founders to graduates. What they really want to do here is really networking, sharing, uh, learning from each other. It's all about inspiration and of course uniting all these women together it just moves things much faster and it creates this momentum. And by connecting through organized talks like this one, they're already seeing results. Women are getting jobs. They're getting employed by female founders. And, um, you know, it's just an amazing network to connect young women who are university students who just graduated, not sure if they're going to join a large company or possibly start their own. But what better way than to learn and see how it works. And it could be anything from taking tips from entrepreneurs and I thought I'd share some learnings from during that time. To learning how to code. We want to not only inspire, but help um, and give support to people who want to know how to code. I think it's an amazing initiative. Um, we're actually two female founders and just moved to Berlin, so it's great to see that there is so much going on for women in technology here. Bottom line is, yes, people should be based on merit, not gender, and I, I think what this scene needs is just more representation. And there's so many phenomenal women building companies here or joining companies and will later on build their own. Um, and by highlighting that, the world will know that there are real women in tech here in Berlin and they will speak on major panels across the globe. And it's, it's just great. That's what the tech scene needs. That's the Geekettes, and my guest Jess Erickson has kindly brought along a couple of Geekettes tote bags <laughs> to give away. I should say these are very exclusive. Mm -hmm. There's only 10 left, and I don't know, I don't think you can see it, but there's a button here as well. Pressed, I'm told. Oh, there, there you go. There's a button pressed by Jess Erickson <laughs> herself. Write to us at insight <laughs> at dw.de. You could be the lucky winner of a very exclusive product. That's also the address to write in with your comments on the show. It's always nice to hear from you. We do like to get your posts. Um, in that piece, which is a, a, little, a, a couple of years old, as we mentioned, mm -hmm. I think they said 200 members. There's lots more now and there all is. over the place. There sure is. Yeah. Uh, we've reached around a couple thousand now. And this past March, we decided to launch into new cities, both here in Europe and in the United States. Um, so some of the cities are London, New York, Maastricht, Lisbon, Porto, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul in Minnesota. Um, and really, it's, it's been an amazing um, change for us. It's a transformational thing to grow into a global organization. But I think it's even more empowering for women 
because now they get to connect across borders. And originally, mm -hmm. you were doing this out of love and passion, mm -hmm. but this is your job now. It how, is. How, I mean, do you mind me asking, how do you financially survive? Who sure. pays you? That's a really good question. Um, so last May, we had a very unique opportunity to partner with Deutsche Telekom. And they are our benefactor. They've been extremely supportive in launching us as a full-time entity. And um, they've been so kind to even give us an office space here in Berlin, completely free. Um, so it's the generosity of a company like Telecom who understands the importance of diversity and they would like to have an impact not only in the startup technology scene, but also within Telecom itself. And yeah, I mean, I'm sure they are being kind and generous, but I mean, they're a business as well. So are they hiring more women themselves in, oh, of on course. the tech side? Absolutely. I mean, really? um, absolutely. It's a great recruitment tool as well to be connected with an organization like us if we have the top female tech talent in our community and they're connecting their designers and their engineers with the geekettes. Uh, you never know. Maybe there's projects that happen. Maybe someone gets hired. But it has been a win-win situation. And very recently, we just announced a partnership with Sony. So we are going to dive into hardware and really explore the hardware side of technology. I'm very excited to announce some big projects in the coming months. The you can't tell us more yet. I, I can't. It's a bit top secret, but if you check out our website in a few weeks, you'll be the first to know. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. Um, actually, talking of your website, yeah. I went on your website. There are jobs on your website. I mean, do you sort of uh, work kind of as a job agency for, for women a bit? Well, I, I don't know. Well, it's been interesting. A lot of companies have obviously knocked on our door and said, I'm trying to recruit women. I really need to find talented women to join us. And then I have a lot of women in our community saying, well, I'm looking for a new job. I've just transitioned out of this. So we thought a job board and, and connecting these two makes sense. And it's working. OK. Um, um, yeah. I do want to ask you that. <laughs> I'll put you... What's a scrum master? There's a job on your website advertising for a scrum master. <laughs> now, a scrum to me is a term in rugby. Yeah. But it's obviously, do you know what a scrum master is? Yeah, I mean, there's different approaches when you're building a startup company. When you're a very young company, you need to be agile and you need to adopt new strategies that wouldn't necessarily work in a large company like Telecom. And so it is a strategy and building and designing and coming up with an action plan and strategy of how you build your business. Okay. I would love to have you come and participate in a future workshop. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I will. <laughs> I, I learned something. And a growth hacker. Yeah. What's that? Um, you know, I, I, I think it's a bit of a, a gimmick name. Well, I shouldn't say that. Maybe I'm going to get in trouble for saying that on air. Um, there's definitely different opinions on growth hacking and what it actually means. Um, I'd say most startups in general are focused on growing quickly and you need talented people to come up with a strategy how to do that. There's a lot of deliverables, you need to hit big goals and you have to do it fast. So the with... hacker is used in a positive sense then? Always, because yeah. I wanted to also ask you yeah. later, but I'll ask you now. Yeah. Because um, you've had a hackathon. Yes. And I immediately thought, oh. Mm-hmm. I'm ignorant, okay? Yeah. So what, but what was a hackathon? Okay. A hack so, it, it's not always negative, this word. No, of course not. I think there's like a, a misconception that it means computer or cyber crime. What it really is, it, it's just a playful term where you combine hack and marathon and you've, you've hackathon, created yeah. an event that allows technologists, whether you're an engineer or designer or um, somebody with an idea, and they come together for about 24 hours to 48 hours and, and literally hack out and code new products. These could be mobile apps, websites, robots. Um, it's just a very intense period. It's a marathon. You need to get to the end and win that prize. Mm. Yeah. You're obviously, you're, you're right up there in uh -huh. the Berlin tech industry. You obviously know a lot. So can you, can, can you, it, it's, it's, it's not Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. Berlin, but there's been a lot in the press about it really coming up as a, high-tech place. Are there a, a, a couple of names you can tell me that are, are now famous that have been created oh, yeah. in Berlin? Like? I, I think one of the major key players of this tech scene are Wuga, 
Um, it's a gaming company, yeah, yeah. SoundCloud. There are millions of people who use the SoundCloud, SoundCloud platform. SoundCloud Berlin, of course yeah, it is. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, that was founded by two Swedes who moved to Berlin and made it happen. Um, and, you know, uh, there's a new investment firm called Early Bird Ventures. They're really, really investing in Berlin startups. Um, you've got Six Wonder Kinder. You've got a lot of big names in this in the scene. And why do you think Berlin's the place? There's so many reasons. I mean, the obvious that are stated over and over again is it's very cheap. Um, it's easy to set up a company if you don't have really high overhead costs. Um, there's an incredibly talented group of people who are coming from all over the world because they're attracted to the city itself. And naturally, they end up working at startup companies and helping internationalize these companies. Um, I think Berlin is just a very creative place. And I'd like to say that, you know, it's like New York City in the 1980s. It's kind of reinventing itself. And when people show up, they can do so much very quickly. And I think I'm a testament to that. Showing up three years ago, if you had asked me, would I have started Geekettes, a global organization? I would have laughed. Yeah, but now, sure. because of the amazing people in this city, I've been able to achieve so much in such a short amount of time. It wouldn't have really happened in another city. You, you might have well, stuck around with a few... Uh, friends saying, I think it's really bad that the yeah. tech scene's male dominated, but would you? <laughs> this, this, this city does that. It's a very yeah. special city. I think the people in it have helped me tremendously. I owe them a great deal of gratitude to all the men and women who've supported me in my ventures and, you know, helping me take that leap and doing something risky. I never had that feeling in Seoul or in London or in New York City. But I certainly had it when I arrived in Berlin. Oh, wow. Yes. I mean, that's that's quite a statement. Not in New York. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to the beginning. You were born in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. Not St. Was... Paul's. Nope, St. Paul. I know. I heard about this. It's St. <laughs> Paul, Minnesota. But yeah. to me, when I looked at the map, isn't that kind of Minneapolis? Or, but oh, don't... Yeah, no, I okay. wouldn't okay. say that. You're going to make a lot it. of Minnesotans angry. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, but it, you it's know, nice. it's unique. We're the Twin Cities, right? There are really no other places like that in the United States. And they're back to back. St. Paul's the capital, but Minneapolis houses Saint a Paul's lot of... St. Paul's the capital? Yeah. I apologize no to worries. everybody <laughs> in Minnesota unreservedly for what <laughs> I've just said. Excuse my terrible ignorance. Yeah, oh, but no. we learned something, you see. St. Right. Paul is, oh, wow. And Minnesota's home to Prince and Bob Dylan. I mean, and 10,000 lakes. It's a gorgeous, beautiful state. And um, I had a very lovely upbringing in Minnesota. Yeah, there's time for a photo uh, that you sent us, lovely photo of your mum and dad. Yes. Now, how did they meet? Because one's Korean, originally one's Norwegian. Did right. they meet in... In Saint Minnesota. Paul? Oh, wow. Yep. Um, so my mother uh, immigrated from Korea to Hawaii in probably like mid-70s. And then she got a great job offer in Minnesota, of all places. I don't know why you jump from Hawaii to Minnesota. Extreme weather opposites. But <laughs> yeah. She showed up and um, was set up on a blind date with my father. And they went on a, a little Broadway show and they totally hit it off and have been together ever since. Yeah. Yeah. Here's, actually, I was, here's <laughs> you in a Broadway show. Not quite, actually. This is, I just think this is a cute picture. Aw, thank when, you. Were you thinking of going on the stage? Yeah, you know, I always enjoyed theatrics. Um, when I was in high school, I'd actually help build stage sets. So I wasn't really into getting on stage and acting, but I liked the whole process. And I thought, th you know, people in theater are great and very creative to be around. Mm. But yeah, I was a little bit sassy as a young one. <laughs> now this actually, this actually goes back in time to when you, yeah. this, I must mention this because you're one year old here and you're standing up, but you're most probably propped up. You've told I am. me before. I Do am tell us, up. this is an extraordinary picture. Yeah, honest. so in Korean tradition, when you turn one years old, it's a very big deal. And they dress you up in um, this little hanbok or a doll book, they call it. And um, you invite all your relatives and sit down before everyone and eat <laughs> a lot of delicious Korean food. Uh, it's, it's been said in the past thousands of years ago um, that many Korean children didn't survive until their first year birthday. And so that's why the tradition oh of celebrating it was so important. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I want to actually stay in Korea, but jump on. And, uh, sure. 
because this also, um, this is a photo of you, you're there top left in red grown up. Mm -hmm. These are all Korean children and I believe... They're from North Korea. What? Yeah. Yeah, they? they were born and um, raised in North Korea but escaped and they made escaped. it to Seoul. Yeah, it's... It's a very important story that I think more people need to understand about the atrocities that happen in North Korea and the horrible experiences they've had. But they sometimes are able to slip through the cracks and get to South Korea. And the NGO that I worked for called Citizens Alliance for Human Rights helps rehabilitate the escapees. And, and that was one group that we got to hang out with all summer, oh, teaching wow. them English, playing activities. You, you were spending time in... in, in Back in South Korea. Absolutely. What was the name of that group again? We'll mention them again. They uh, sound Citizens like a good... Alliance for North Korean Human Rights. That sounds like a or worthwhile, N... worthy cause. Yeah, know. it was extremely uh, life-changing for me to work with these people and, and understand the realities that exist today and um, phenomenally talented people pushing the awareness and also understanding that there's some similarities in terms of the division of West and East Germany and North and South Korea. They're studying this and understanding how can we reunify North and South Korea someday. Yeah. It'd be tremendous to see this in our lifetime. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever thought the Berlin Wall was going to come exactly. down, for instance. Yeah. I was here at the time and it was a complete shock mm -hmm. to everybody, you know, that overnight it happened. You That's never what know. I'm hoping something's yeah. going to yeah. happen. You've mentioned London, you mentioned New York, you mentioned Seoul, mm -hmm. you mentioned St. Paul, Minnesota. What brought you to Berlin initially? Obviously not the geekettes that didn't <laughs> exist. Well, I was attracted for a number of reasons. Um, I had been to Berlin before and visited while I was a student and I fell in love with the arts and the cultural scene, uh, specifically the music industry here and all the amazing producers. Um, as a fun time hobby, I actually like to radio DJ with you know, artists who are visiting and coming through Berlin or also Berlin-based artists and play some electronic music, some house, some techno. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. You've actually <laughs> yeah. almost introduced the next piece. Jess, oh, wow. okay. Jess does have another <laughs> string to her bow. She's a radio DJ, as she just said, and we hug out with her on a typical hot weekend <laughs> here in Berlin. At 11 p.m. on a Friday night, Jess Erickson is in the northern Berlin district of Wedding. She's waiting for her boyfriend, Matt. Hey, sweetie. Today, he's a guest DJ on Jess's radio show. I always had sort of an interest towards electronic music, and I knew that this was the capital, and that you have so many different people from all over the world with different backgrounds coming together to create something magical. And you don't really have that in many other cities. Oh, there they are. Before heading for the studio, they stop off at a snack bar, one of many that are open throughout the night. These bad boys. Cheers. Cheers. To Berlin. <laughs> I used to be DJ Norcore in university because I was Norwegian Korean. I kid you not, that's how big of a dork I was. And Jess came to Berlin for professional reasons. She started out as a public relations consultant for internet startups. But tonight she's focusing on music. The Twin FM studio is housed in an old factory. Party time! Welcome to Twin FM LX TV Studios. It's a bit warm in here, so maybe we yeah, should do the. As well, it's cool when you stick your head out the window. <laughs> the room quickly fills up with guests from many different nations. Well, let's give it up for Blink and Kite in the house tonight. It is a hot and sweaty evening at Twin FM. You guys are troopers. Enjoy the cold beer. Turn up the music and let's party. Jess Erickson has been hosting her own show for some time now. It's called Clubnacht or Club Night. And the name says it all. So I started bringing in international acts, people I knew from New York, from Seoul, from London wanting to showcase their talents because the world should know what's going on in Berlin. And people are starting to take notice and really take a serious look at what's happening here. So I'm the megaphone. That's what I call myself. 
After her show, Jess and her friends also go out and party. They head for the Prince Charles Club in the trendy Kreuzberg district. <laughs> but she's here in the studio with us now. Jess Erickson's my guest. Um, do you still go clubbing? From time to time, not as often. Um, yeah, just busy businesswoman now. Yeah, yeah, but I still like to go out and enjoy myself and have fun with friends every now and then. It's important. Is, is Berlin, I mean, is it good? Are the clubs here good? Oh, absolutely. Still? I've, people travel from all over the world to go clubbing in Berlin. Berkheim being the, the mecca of techno. I know, I know. I've been on a plane of returnees back to <laughs> Britain who... Um, I was the only person not asleep on the plane. <laughs> I believe they'd been that, up yeah. for the weekend. But yes. um, yeah, actually, the, the reason I ask that is, is it over a bit, Berlin? Is Berlin now a little bit passé? I mean, oh, no. Rolling Stone magazine. Mm -hmm. Do you know? Have you? Do you know oh, about yeah. the article they've written? Said no, Berlin's it's it's over. It's um, I don't know what Rolling Stone said, but a lot of people are saying it's Leipzig. Really? The next week. I think it's just I thought beginning. you were going to tell me this. I'm, I'm, no. I'm cool and hip. I know all these oh, things. Oh, come on. <laughs> Rolling Stone should wake up to the fact that this city has just started. I mean, it's... Do you think so? Really? Yeah, I oh, think wow. there are so many people who are coming to the city to build things and make music and open up art galleries and explore all the possibilities. And there's so much more potential to continue to grow. I think it's the exact opposite. Well, that's good, yeah. that's good to hear because, yeah. no, it really is being written about. OK. Um, and it's a classic thing, isn't it, that, mm -hmm. that Berlin has been cool and trendy and nice and mm -hmm. uh, for many years. And it goes, it goes, it'll go to, I don't know, Barcelona, whoever's next mm -hmm. kind of thing, you know, uh, over a period of time. But you say it's not reached a peak. Oh, no, oh, there's okay. a lot of exciting things to happen. <laughs> <laughs> An embarrassing photo. Oh, Jess, okay. what's this then, Jess? This is Jess's first day in Berlin. Look at the party. Yes. I mean, this like I said, welcome. how how is Berlin dead if Golitzer Park is packed with a thousand people over a weekend? This was a cultural weekend celebrating food and drinks from different cultures. As you can see, I'm having a lot of fun with my friends. Um, there was a lot of great music being played. I love Berlin summers, and I cannot wait for this summer to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people come to visit for the and, summertime. And talking of Berlin and talking of Germany, we have yeah. our wonderful questionnaire. Sure. That um, you, you, you filled in quite a lot. In fact, we've got two pages. It's wonderful. <laughs> I, I will start with the coolest German living. Mm -hmm. Who did you put? I would have to say Franca Potenta, um, the actress who played Lola in Lola Rent, or as we know it in the United States, Run Lola Run. Mm. I remember when I was 17 and I went to the theaters to see this and it was just mind-blowingly awesome. Uh, I was used to living this suburban lifestyle. I had a very set way of thinking of things and it just kind of turned everything upside down. All of a sudden I wanted to color my hair pink. I wanted to listen to techno. I ran through the streets of Minneapolis. Her character was so compelling and well done that I almost wanted to become Lola. And soon enough, that kind of just opened up this whole avenue of new music and exploration of German culture. Uh, so I'm really glad that film made it and hit it mainstream in the US. And yeah. I never get bored of it. I can watch it over and over again. Oh, really? She's a great actress. Yeah, yeah, it is a great film. Actually. It is. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, a dead cool German you put down as Ludwig van Beethoven. And I, I just like the story because when you go home, yes. tell us. Okay. It's so sweet. <laughs> I, my parents invested a lot in my piano lessons growing up, and by age 16, I finally had mastered Moonlight Sonata. And so Beethoven, I, I guess, gave me the gift of being able to express emotion through music. It was the first piece in my life that I could play slow with the right tempo and, and really feel the music rather than just banging at the keys and, and trying to push out a sound. And so whenever I go home to Minnesota, I'll sit down and play that song for my parents, and then we'll have a nice chat afterwards. Ah, oh, that is yeah. nice. That is nice. Thank you. Uh, German culinary achievement. <laughs> gummy bearchen, or gummy bears. I am Which an addict. Which are worldwide, actually, I they think. They are. Think. They're very popular. Yeah. I love the little cherry ones and the 
Schlumpfina or the Smurf um, <laughs> version oh, of the Oh, you're a Haribo. specialist. <laughs> oh, I, I am. see. Uh, <laughs> they have gotten yeah. me through late nights of working and they taste great. And um, heads up, yeah, try it out if you haven't had a Haribo yet. <laughs> and a thing I like here is ju you've written down, and I think this is an interesting point, as ju good German characteristic. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what you wrote? I think it's the directness of Germans. Which can be taken... As in the some, other way, can't it? Sometimes People sometimes think Germans are rude, if you like. They th sometimes. Yeah. But you say... I do. think it's refreshing. Um, I think in American culture, we're kind of uh, making things sound nicer and, and kind of beat around the bush, as we like to say. Yeah. Whereas here, it's just get to the point, let's get this settled, and um, there's no room for misinterpretation. It's its very exact and I, I like that and I've kind of adopted that into the way I live. I guess it's quite good in business too. Oh, absolutely. It gets things done very quickly and when you're working in a fast-paced industry, sometimes it's very useful to be very direct. Well, I would say it's very similar mm -hmm. in, in Britain, that, 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 you know, the opposite of people. And I, I now, when I go home, yeah. I, people say, oh, it's lovely, it's wonderful to see you. Yeah. They don't really, <laughs> you know, if a German says it's wonderful to see you, yeah. they mean it. It's very so, genuine. Yeah, it's very genuine. No, I do. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Something we're going to disagree with. <laughs> okay. Something the Germans do poorly, you say. Go on. I'll let All right. You say I your wouldn't piece. say poorly. I would say it's something I've struggled with is the fact that everything is shut down on Sundays, um, being that stores and grocery stores. Um, I, I like to rest on Saturday and then do all my errands and you know run around and get things done on a Sunday. But that's just culturally embedded in me. I think it's because everything's open on Sundays in America. It, it, it has been something that's come up on the show before and people who, yeah. who watch the show regularly know that I'm a great fan of Sunday closing because yeah. I come from a country where everything's open 24-7, as you do. Mm -hmm. And I love, I personally love this. There's a difference on a Sunday. Sure. It is different. Yeah. But I do sympathise with somebody, you know, working as you do all yeah. hours that God sends you. And um, then I you want... am ready to crash on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope, I know, yeah. yeah. And f uh, f uh, finally, I think something the Germans do extremely well. You're very fond of their breakfast. Oh, yes. I love German breakfasts and I will definitely bring this tradition back to the States. It's the, the jams and the delicious brown bread that you've produced and all the different assortments of cheese and meat and the hard boiled egg and the whole presentation of it is very lovely. It looks nice and it's light enough, right? If you have a lot of friends and family joining, it's not too heavy and I think, um, I'll definitely be making this exact breakfast when I move back someday. And, and how did that differ to, a, to an American breakfast, then? Um, have you had a Denny's Grand Slam breakfast? <laughs> it's so heavy, I think... Um... I think I have, actually. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> or I when do. you go yes. to a classic American okay. diner, it, it's sometimes too much, um, and it, it's, it's not as light as I'd like it to be. Um, it's tasty, don't get me wrong, but I do prefer the German breakfasts. Okay, so as we've heard yeah. from Jess, there's more than just <laughs> toast and tea to a German breakfast. Here's a report on a great German tradition. Germans are fond of a hearty breakfast. Even if it means getting up early, they like to go to work on a full stomach. Wholemeal bread with cheese, a bit of sausage, Scrambled egg with bacon. Sausage every time. Coffee. A bowl of muesli. A cup of tea. Lots of different things. On the weekend, Germans like to go out for breakfast. Whatever else they're having, and whatever it is, there's a lot of it. The centerpiece of the German breakfast is bread. The country is home to some 16,000 bakeries selling over 300 different types of bread and countless different types of rolls. The beloved Brötchen. However, bread is a relatively recent addition to the German breakfast table. Back in the Middle Ages, the Germans would enjoy a bowl of porridge with a spoonful of honey, washed down with a cup of water. Eventually, they started snacking on a piece of bread. 
which explains the origins of the German word Frühstück, which translates as early peace. Porridge is still a popular breakfast option, albeit in a more sophisticated form, muesli. The Berlin-based company Berliner Frühstück makes 12 different varieties of muesli, and business is booming. They now produce two tons of muesli per month. In German-speaking countries, muesli is considered an ideal way to start the day. But some naughty people still skip breakfast. Statistics show that almost 30% of young Germans go without the first meal of the day. Lots of people just grab a coffee on the go. But increasingly, others are scheduling business meetings over breakfast rather than lunch or dinner. The cafe specialty is the étagère, or cake stand, which costs 20 euros. It's ideal for anyone who thinks muesli is just a bit too virtuous. Three layers of breakfast treats. It proves that even though Germans take their breakfast very seriously, they're not so serious about calorie counting. And whatever else they might indulge in, there'll always be some bread on the side. It is, it is your insights into this country. Mm -hmm. So um, I was just saying to Jess, are, are the Germans healthier generally with their eating habits then? I, I think there's a more balanced lifestyle here. Um, there tends to be a lot of more walking around and biking you know, rather than relying on a car and being stuck in traffic. I think that's where the exercise comes into play. Yeah. Well, Berlin also, Berlin personally, we, you, this is where you live, is, mm -hmm. is a reasonably flat city, so biking, and there are lots of wonderful bike paths. Oh, yes. Should One thing that I didn't mention from your questionnaire, you said your favourite German word, übergeil. Yeah. Why? <laughs> Why is that? Which do, I would translate as... I awesome or super cool. Uh, okay, super yeah, cool. Okay. There, there's a very well-known figure by the name of Sven Weiss. Uh, he's yeah. a big producer in the electronic music world, and yeah. he actually has this uh, really funny music panel. If you go to shrine.de, um, you can press a button and he'll shout out the word. It's hilarious. Um, everything from Gute Laune Leute to Übergeil. Okay. I think it's it's fun. Okay. It, and it's picked up in the States. I know people who yeah. shout this out every now and then. <laughs> now, yeah. we, um, we haven't got a lot longer, but okay. here you are in Berlin. You seem settled here. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, now. That's not the right one. That's the one that definitely wasn't your boyfriend. This, yeah. This, we've seen him in, in the piece earlier. Sure. Um, and uh, he's an Englishman. Did you yes. meet here then? We did. We actually met at the first company we joined, um, Six Wonder Kinder. And um, he and I, you know, we kind of secretly dated for a while and then... We came out and told everyone and they said, oh, that's fine. You know, beautiful that a little romance would butt out of a startup company. Matt is a great partner in crime. He's been super supportive of my endeavors and he's very patient. And, and is I, he in the same business? Or? Yeah, he, he had been working in the tech yeah, startup yeah, scene, well, but now yeah. he's um, ventured into more advertising and copywriting. So he actually has Bentley as a... Um, a current client that he's working through with an agency. I need a car. Would he get? Would he? Could uh, I get a car? <laughs> I would love a company car. If Bentley sets him up with a car, fabulous. Yeah. Um, but yes, but it's interesting. Here you are, two young people from two different countries. Now this is your city, is it? Yep. Is this? This is, is our is home. This, is it really? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it it feels like home, and we we have a great network of friends and people that we've built relationships with. Um, we still go back home and meet our families, and um, we like to explore and continue to travel together. But yeah, Berlin is probably the one city I've lived um, the longest in, away from the United States as well. And as is Matt. this city? I mean, um, this city, the, the 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 startup scene in Berlin last year. Mm -hmm. was a 1.4 billion euro business. Oh, yes. <laughs> this isn't just a little boom, is it? This seems... Do you oh. think it's here to stay? Absolutely. And, you know. I mean, people really should take a serious look at the innovation and 
the kind of support base that we have here in Berlin. There's phenomenal opportunity to start a business and grow that business. And we've seen that with many of the companies I had mentioned earlier. And, and is the finance behind it? Is the, is the, oh, yeah. uh, are the men with the money, which is essential, yeah, isn't yeah. it, sort of looking at Berlin a lot? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we have investors coming in all the time. There are German investors looking closely at startups. Uh, we actually have hosting an all women's demo day where women from all over Europe can present their idea to a team of VCs and angel investors. I think people are looking to find great companies to support, and that's certainly happening here in Berlin. And why hasn't it happened in Eastern Europe, which would be cheaper, wouldn't it, to set well, all these things up? I mean, It's not to say it won't happen. Um, I think it just time will tell where all these new tech hubs will sprout out. I mean, Silicon Valley is 50 years old. I think New York's 15, maybe London's 10, Berlin maybe five, six years. So it takes time to build and continue to grow. However, I think Berlin is on a fast track. I think we've accelerated tremendously over the last few years. And the Geekettes will be, ba this is their base, although they're now spreading around the world yep. and any uh, tech Women mm -hmm. watching, look up the Geek Cats and... Thank you. Yeah? Yes. Be... We are headquartered in Berlin. We love to meet women from all walks of life and we'll definitely travel to all the new cities and support them as best we can. But, um, yeah, Berlin is home base. Wonderful. Well, nice way to end it. Thanks, Jess Erickson. Thank thanks you for so being much. with us. Thank, Thank you. you for watching. And uh, don't forget to write in about these very exclusive Geek <laughs> tote bags. There's only 10 left. Yes. <laughs> and we're giving away two, so write to us at uh, insight at dw.de if you'd like to be put in, uh, have a chance of winning one of those. And join me again at the same time next week with another fascinating guest on Insight Germany. Bye-bye for now.